Hello, everyone. I'm Dominique. And I'm Christina. And we are the Connected in Glass podcast. Every week, we will feature interviews with glass artists who speak to their creative processes and overcoming challenges. These conversations are real and raw. We hope that by sharing these stories, you're able to find some connection and know that you're not alone. We just wanted to take a moment to thank you for listening to our podcast. We're super passionate about this project and work for hours every week to bring you this content. So if you'd like to help support us, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash connected in glass. Also, please consider joining our Facebook group, Connected in Glass Community, where we continue the conversations from these episodes. We'd love to hear from you. This episode of Connected in Glass is sponsored by Diddy Clips. Diddy Clips has changed the way we film our glass blowing videos, and we're proud to be working with them. Today, we're interviewing Zena Losi. She's a glass artist based in Temecula, California, who has been working with glass since 2017. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's very exciting. All right. So we're so excited to get to know you. First, you want to tell us a little bit about where you live, what you enjoy besides glass, and start working us into your story of how you started doing glass. Okay. Well... I live in a desert valley in, in the Inland Empire of Southern California. I'm basically a vagrant at this point, just kind of in between places with my, you know, kiln and uh, main setup at my parents' house and just running around kind of the West Coast right now, couch surfing. Let's see. It's uh, very hot. In the summers, it gets around, you know, a nice 114, 116. So it's great for a glass blowing. Let's see, what, what else was in that question? What do you do for fun besides glass? Oh, see, that that's a hard one. But I think th- the answer has to be, like, learning. Generally, I'd say you could you could say it's, like, working on my mental health or just kind of ancillary skills around glass or just learning about random things. I enjoy, you know, industrial disasters, marine life, outer space, like it goes anywhere. So just, you know, information and and consuming it. So cool. Okay. So how did you start doing glass? Well, okay. Two things. One, I saw it. And it was really cool, which is something, you know, I hear a lot with the glass blowers. It's pretty and it's cool and I like watching it. So that's one reason. The other reason is I was not like the best child growing up. So I, you know, your parents want you to do extracurriculars. So I really tried to find things that they would say no to. So, you know, two black belts, a pilot's license, and a glass growing career later, they seem to have won. That's so funny. <laughs> and did you just pursue taking classes at one particular place, or are you a little more self-taught? I'm self-taught. So, let's see. I sat in, for a year, I sat in the back of a warehouse on a national torch, just kind of doing production figurines watching the guy but it wasn't really classes per se and then once that upper like I wasn't able to go there anymore because I had no money (laughs) I just had no money so I found a glass blower who let me sit in the back of his shop and siphon his oxygen and propane and let me use his torch table and there I got the most information because I was able to watch the the hotshot people and kind of develop a hybrid style between you know what I can find online for flame working to teach myself and what I could watch with the hotshot to teach myself so I'd say the first academic environment I was in was as a TA at Pilchuck so that was super cool (laughs) 
Okay. So for the people that haven't had a chance to look at your work yet, could you verbalize what your style of work is? I like detail. I like a lot of detail. Sculptural? Let's see. I try to have more of like a an elegant flowy style to my work. I make a lot of like female forms, birds, and dragons. Right now I'm kind of working on making big fanned out peacock tails. So kind of larger, not <laughs> like, not <laughs> just ridiculous stuff. I like making things that seem hard. That's my style. So do you just see something that you're like, oh, I need to make that out of glass? Or do you draw inspiration from anything in particular? That's hard. With my autism, things are a bit kind of weird as far as like planning out and being able to execute on those plans. So most of my work is kind of like made up on the spot. So usually if you're seeing something, it's it probably started as something else and you know, evolved into whatever it is. That's so cool. Can you tell us a little bit more about your autism and how it's helped you with, with your glass career? Yeah. So I'd say it helps because the hyperfixation really just kind of makes me, you know, connect everything back to glass. So I think I pick up skills generally pretty, pretty fast. And I can, I don't need necessarily people to tell me what they're doing. I I can just, I'm pretty good at mimicking what I see in like the YouTube videos or what the hotshot people are doing. And now that I'm on tour, you know, what, what everyone else is, you know, doing on their torches. What's it like traveling around and working in other people's space? Is it hard to get in the zone and, and get moving and working? Or do you find that you can kind of make yourself at home anywhere? Yeah, I'm finding I can make myself at home basically anywhere because I've been pretty isolated, I'd say, as a person since 2015. So it's really nice to be able to talk to people and kind of, you know, glass is my social life. (laughs) And when you're traveling and working, are you doing collaborations with other people? Are you kind of like working outside of them or everything? Yeah. I made a dragon on a skull with Nathan Belmont. That was really, really fun. I, we made a peacock with Blossom Glass, where she did all her pinstriping on the tail, and that looks amazing. I'm wi- I'm working with someone called Starseed Glass, and he does a lot of the laser etched fume stuff. So we're going to be making some birds out of that today, which is really exciting. I yeah I I generally you know connect with people as I'm engaging in something versus just kind of like sitting there and socializing. I need that task to really kind of center myself on to kind of connect with people. Do you find that you have a different headspace that you go into when you're working with somebody else? Or do you work differently when you're working with somebody else versus when you're alone? I'd say there's a little bit more hesitancy because you want to make sure what you make can be handled by the other person and vice versa. But beyond trying to make sure that, because, you know, I, I handle my glass a little bit more responsive, irresponsibly. I, you know, I'll make a seal not as good and I'll save it for later because I know I could do it later. I, you know, kind of not doing that so the other person has, doesn't have to deal with you being lazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, I'd say that's the main difference. Other than that, I'm, I... Again, with that hyperfixation, it's kind of just like everything fades away and I'm in my little happy place, which is, you know, it's wonderful. (laughs) You always feel like you're bursting with ideas or do you ever find that you come to a point where you're stuck and you just don't feel creative or you don't feel like you know what to make? I'd say, so, okay, there are times where I don't know what to make, but usually I just pick up a piece of glass and start melting it and figure, you know, melt it into a weird shape and try to figure out what that shape is. And that's kind of how I figure out what I'm doing when I don't know what to do. I, I tend to be bursting with ideas, but it's, I, I'd say kind of the 
mental health aspect it would kind of stop me from executing. So it'd be more of just kind of depression and things like that getting in the way of, you know, getting those ideas out. And what do you do when you're like having those depression moments besides just kind of starting playing with glass? Do you have any other ways that you work through that? Or do you just? Um, let's see. You know, the classic is being catatonic in bed. That's the classic Nicole. Beyond that, really trying to like understand the resistance that I feel inside. And if that resistance isn't necessarily if I can't pinpoint it to something, I really try to kind of understand that sometimes things just kind of feel bad and that, you know, regardless the time is passing and I could be blowing glass and feeling bad versus just being catatonic in bed feeling bad. So it's really trying to kind of internalize that I could be doing something that I want to be doing, even if, you know, depression is making the world spin you're talking to the catatonic in bed queens over here so like (laughs) we got you oh yeah he said that i'm like oh yeah we are on the same page here (laughs) it's it's there we go (laughs) there we go it's perfect that's so that's so funny do you feel like i know you said that like getting up out of bed and at least blowing glass it's something good that you can be doing with your time do Mm. you feel like there are other ways that like glass kind of helps your mental health besides Um, just physically doing it let's see there's I struggle to socialize and I've been peerless and not around people since for what is it six years so my social skills are pretty bad so Basically, my plan is if I get really good at something, people will want to talk to me. (laughs) So, hi, thank you. This is very exciting. (laughs) So it's kind of helping me, you know, connect with people connected in class. So I'd say that's, that's the main thing it's done for me. It's kind of given me an out kind of beyond my own internal world because it's really hard to, you know, interpret the, you know, everyone else. (laughs) Uh, That's so cool. It's so refreshing just how honest you are about that stuff. It is nice. It is nice to have a platform that we can all um, make friends and communicate about. Oh yeah. No, the, the glass community has been like, it's so welcoming and everyone's so friendly. It's amazing. Like I, I've been, very pleasantly surprised with the people I've met so far and the events I've gone to. So can you tell us about the different ways that you get your work out there in the world? Do you sell through like any shops or do you sell on Instagram or? Yeah, I sell, um, I sell on Instagram. I have uh, a website and then there's a, a gallery that comes and gives me commissions every now and again. And that gallery also has some of my work. Let's see. I did a production job for a while, so that's some of my work, but I didn't I didn't get that glass out there. That was their that was their thing. So it's I'm I'd say I'm generally not I'm I'm focused on kind of building up myself as the, a glass artist. <laughs> and this isn't good for the financial situation. And I'm sure everyone, you know, kind of has their own version of this. Where it's just like I'm I'm really practicing skills and that doesn't necessarily make work that is super easy to sell and I'll have to go to, you know, the fancier art shows to get rid of it. <laughs> so yeah. Generally just it's yeah, Instagram or my website. And how do you figure out how to price this work? Well, so I have a general kind of like bare minimum hourly thing plus material costs, but, you know, you also, I I also factor in, like, you know, the complexity and, you know, what, what, you know, if, if, if other people can, you know, replicate it easily or just, you know, if it's 
something that I believe is worth more, I'll price it more just because, I don't know, it's, there's a lot of, there's a very strategic way of building up that, that price point as the work gets more complex. And yeah, it's, it's, it is difficult. It is difficult, but I, I, I get through it by just having kind of this bare minimum. And then, you know, you, you, then you kind of see how you feel once you have that number and you know, what you truly think should be on top of that number. And that's generally how I do it. Okay. Can we go back to the pilot's license? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I, how, how does someone go from getting a pilot's license to blowing glass? I just, <laughs> yeah, let's see. Okay. It's actually perfect. A, I was trying to find career because I, I really struggled in school, not academically, just with peers to the point where I, I told the school, you know, give me the work. I'm going to graduate early. And so that, that's why I've been pretty socially isolated. I, I haven't been in school since I was 16. So pilot's license to glass. Basically, when you're flying around, you're on, you know, on comms, you're talking with people, you're talking to either air traffic control, or if it's a non-towered um, airport, you're on radio frequency, talking to the pilots themselves, making sure everyone knows where they're at around the airport and where they're at in the pattern. So, or in, in the flight pattern, so you're not, you know, exploding in midair, that's ideal. So there was a lot of talking <laughs> and I like, I don't know. It just, after a while, I just, it just, I, there, it didn't feel like a full activity. So it was kind of like a thinking, all right, I'm not going to do this piloting thing. You know, this plan isn't really going out how I wanted it to be. So, you know, what am I going to do now? Well, I've always been artistic and, you know, glass seems fun. <laughs> so, you know, I went and f there was a guy in Temecula that did the guy whose shop I sat in the back of. He made, you know, all kinds of, he was an ex-Disney guy. So just watched him make the figurines and mimicked him. <laughs> and yeah, so it was just kind of a, what's next it's truly just a you know what am i good at what would make me happy now that i need to change this plan how do i how do i you know try to make a life for myself okay so do you find also like I, when you're going for your pilot license but now as a glass artist do you find that people treat you differently because you're a woman than if perhaps if you were a man or do you find that people have treated you rather equally I'd say there is a difference because there's there's always a difference with how people talk and kind of like their body language around me before and after I show them my work. So there's definitely, I'm not sure if that's more of just like a craftsman respect or something like that. It could be male, female, because, you know, I, th I think it's more of a, they write me off when you're, you know, a girl walking up being like, hey, I'm a glass blower too. It's, you're just kind of written off. And then when they see the work, you know, their shoulders square up and they stand up a little more straighter and they clear their throat. <laughs> and do you think that as people discover that autism is a part of you, that they treat you a little bit differently? Let's see. I think, I don't know. That's, I feel like I'm the worst person to be asking because I'm autistic. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think the main difference is I now have a re when I feel myself getting overwhelmed, I understand what that overwhelming feeling is and I can address that or remove myself, but I don't, I'm not quite sure if it really has changed. It's changed how I, you know, act around others. I'm not sh quite sure. Cause I don't necessarily always tell people because I, I'm, I can pass. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're the third or fourth person 
glass artists, like successful glass artists that we've interviewed that autism is just like a part of them. And it's so cool to oh, hear it, how it, it, it benefits them, you know? It, it makes, I don't know, it links everything back to glass and it makes everything kind of, it, I don't know, I, one of those, you see opportunity everywhere if you're, you know, in a good mental space. <laughs> Yeah. And the hyper focus, like it allows you to do all that detail work, right? That you do. I've got, I've got a really nice balance of autism and ADHD to where I hyper focus, but I can't stay on the same thing long enough. So I keep hyper focusing on different skills and that's how I've been building up my skills. (laughs) So It's terrible for, for my finances. I wish I could do production work and have a line, but I just have no discipline. (laughs) That's like, I'll make a, I'll make a bird and it's wings, you know, it's wings are tucked in. I'm like, well, let's see if I can open those wings up and let's see if I can open them up this way. And then now let's see if I can add, you know, let's see if I can do this with feathered cane and see if it'll crack. Oh, now I, it just keeps evolving each piece. So what would you say is your definition of success? And do you feel like you've reached that for you personally? Hmm. Well, let's see. The definition of success I'd say is probably it's hard because like, you're not successful. Like it's not something that happens and then you're just successful. It, it's something that is, seems to like you have to keep maintaining. So I, I think success is more of a, like, like the state that you maintain versus like something that I, like a concrete thing that I accomplish because when you accomplish it, the goalpost moves. So it's more of just kind of trying to maintain and regulate that state and just it's momentum, I guess, you know, success is carrying through that momentum. I'm not sure. Something like that. Have I done it? I mean, I'm, I need money, (laughs) but beyond that, beyond, beyond like societal standards, I'd say I'm pretty successful. Like I'm, I'm really happy with what I'm doing. I'm really happy with where I'm at and the prospects that I have and where I can go and how I can grow. It seems like a continuous state of, you know, I feel generally successful with the glass stuff. The glass industry doesn't really follow societal standards anyway. So it's yeah, fine. that's really nice. That's, that's awesome. That's one of my favorite things. Because you're always like evolving and putting so much time and thought into your work do you ever have trouble like putting your work out there into the world like do you feel like you might get maybe criticism on like your prices or any part of what might happen when you do put your work out there let's see I if I'm putting my work out it's I'm generally I don't know I feel I feel confidence in my work I I when I put a price on it in generally it's unless I want to hold on to the piece and it's really high priced you know I you know it's worth what it's worth and if you don't think it's that you know that's that's your decision but you know it, that won't be your piece <laughs> Criticism, I don't know. I do something that is really difficult and I'd like to see them try. Let's see, what else? Yeah, I I don't know. It's 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 generally kind of like I, I don't know. I'm not really focused. I'm you know, you I'm my harshest critic, so <laughs> it's hard to get past that one. So as soon as I get past that critic, the others are those are easy. Yeah, good point for that. <laughs> so yeah. And if you had to tell your younger self, like a life lesson that you've learned so far, what would it be? It'd be, well, one, you're autistic. I found out when I was 20. (laughs) So that was, that would have been really helpful growing up. So one autistic, but advice, you know, even, even though, you know, I don't know what is going on in the social realm, it still seems that everyone generally has the same, you know, amount of idea of what is going on. So just be confident that no one knows what they're doing. 
<laughs> kind of like you're you're not the only one and you're not doing everything wrong. <laughs> That's a really good life lesson. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been helpful. <laughs> it's been quite helpful. Yeah, and take mental health seriously. Like don't don't be afraid to go and actually like get some support for it because like definitely would not be where I am today without actually going and getting like proper support. Good point. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions that, or anything that you wanted to make sure we went over that you wanted to talk about? I mean, I have a Patreon. In the Patreon, I have a fun little project that I'm doing where if you're a patron at a certain tier, I make a bird. And as this goes on through time, I'll have like, I'll amass a bunch of birds where I can hang them up in an installation where you have like an actual like 3D representation of all my supporters in this beautiful flock. And I kind of have a color system to where each one will be a unique color pattern. So I don't know, that's something fun that I've been doing. But beyond that, you know, yeah, I'm just on tour and kind of just trying to be a part of the glass community <laughs> getting out there in the world and socializing out there. doing yep. scary things the well it's like if i don't do it you know that's scary too so you know i've got fear from both sides so might as well go forward okay so if you had like a conclusion like ending where it's like something to tell people what would yeah. it be i'd say as far as like if you want to like you know glass is a skill you know it's a lot like an instrument where it's just you know hours 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 and i've been very very lucky to you know be able to you know be at home when i need to be at home with my parents because i can't afford to live anywhere else because I want to be blowing glass and just, you know, I don't know. It's it just, I've, I've kept going and it, it's, it's, it's gone well for me. So it's, you know, I figure, you know, if you generally just put that energy towards it and keep practicing, you know, I think, you know, anyone can end up where they want to be. Very good. May take some sacrifices. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but, any path requires sacrifices. So it's like, I don't even factor that in at this point because anything I'm going to do is we're going to require sacrifices. So I'll do what I want. Well, thank you so much for all your time and thought and thanks for sharing so much. Yeah. Thank you for talking with me. My plan is working. If I get good at something, people will want to talk with me. Yes. <laughs> so thank you guys. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you. It was great talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Connected in Glass. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more information on the artists we interview and for updates on the podcast.